Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Averin Lefebvre, and in this video, we're gonna be reviewing the Marhar Sasquatch. That's right, you big-footed, volume-shifted, loving riders. We're doing one for you. This board features Marhar's Camber All Mountain Power, which is rocker in the nose, small flat section before the inserts, camber underfoot, and then another flat section before the upkick in the tail. Basically, you get the power of camber underfoot, rocker in the nose for ease of powder float and entry in and out of turns, and then you got that flat zone, which just creates a little micro section where when you engage the camber, it will pop, as well as added grip, just because it mellows out that rocker section in the nose and that camber section in the tail. This board is only available in a 158. I rode this board in the preseason at Loveland Ski Area on a sunny bluebird day with cooler temps. There was corduroy, chunder snow, icy snow, kind of just about every preseason condition that you could get. And I rode it with my Rome Black Label bindings and my K2 Thraxxus boots. Clearly you have a full directional flex with this board just due to the shape. The overall flex of it comes in just below the middle of the road. So what you get is softer nose that slightly stiffens up right before the front insert pack to right after the back insert pack. And then it gets just a hair stiffer in the tail. Not much, just a hair. A lot of torsional flex in this board. The big thing to note is that they did tweak the core this year, which makes it a little bit more soft. Now that affects the stability in it. You get a lot of chatter up in the nose that does resonate back under the front foot. In really rutted out terrain, this board does get kicked around a little bit. It's not one of those boards that's really damp and just absorbs everything. So just keep your knees bent and be prepared that if you do hit some really rutted out terrain, you're gonna feel it. It doesn't get knocked around to the point that you're getting washed out when you're just driving around the mountain on this thing, but you do really feel it. So be prepared, keep those knees bent, as I already mentioned, and just understand it's a little bit more of a lively board. What's nice about this board is that you don't have to aggressively load it to get snap. You do have camber, which is gonna give you pop, and you will load it up, and that flat section in the tail will actuate. So when you load it up, it engages and it's almost like a little bit of a springboard. So when you're sending a roller, cat track, gap, little bump, fat skier family, you're gonna be able to pop with it. So what's really nice about this board is you got rocker and a flat spot in the nose. This just creates a giant shovel out here where you can just get your weight and lock into a butter. You wanna pop 180, land on it, you're gonna feel locked in. You're gonna be able to pop right back out and get on your weight. Now with the tail, you got a smaller area, so you're really doing like those high speed wheelie butters or you're getting your weight right outside the back insert pack and just locking it in as you go sideways. You just have to be really aware of that. The overall flex, it's playful where it counts. You're not going to have a problem swiveling and sizzling on this thing. The big thing to note with this board is that due to that flat section and rocker, you somewhat lose the nose for turn initiation, which brings it back more under the front foot. And that's really where this board steers. Now you can get it on edge to a point and you're gonna feel locked in, but if you hit variable terrain that's a little bit icy, it will kick out a little bit. It's one of those boards that if the conditions are right, hero snow, you're gonna be carving just fine. But the second they get icy, you're gonna really want to just be prepared that maybe it's not gonna fully grip or you can't engage it as you want. What's nice is you do have that flat section where the camber comes down and that gives you a little added spring out of a turn. It's not much, but it is something and you can notice it. Overall, it transitions smoothly from edge to edge, but it just never feels as locked in as it could be. And a lot of that I feel is just in part due to the flex of it. So who's this board for? The big footed free ride directional guy that wants something a little softer and volume shifted. In my opinion, they shouldn't have softened this board up. It loses some of its precision and power that it had to be more in favor of a party board for a big footed rider. And if that's what you're going for, that's fine. But if you wanted precision, it really lacks in that. It just doesn't have as much power and drive as the previous model did. Overall, I really wish they hadn't have softened it up because the last year's one was phenomenal. This one, it's okay and I understand who it's for. If you're a more laid back rider or someone 
that's looking for a board to go party boarding on, then yeah, this will probably work. But overall, it's okay. Comparable boards, the Libtex Stump Ape, the Battalion Party Wave, the Ride Super Pig. This has been my review of the Marhar Sasquatch. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you own one? Are you gonna buy one? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about this snowboard. If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing any of the videos we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you really wanna support us and just help us grow out what we're doing over here, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP. I could tell you more here, but I got a video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, Avery Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video.